I am Shara McHale, co-founder of Hoop 88 Dreams. Hoop airings in the hip-hop community was about being seen. It was a huge statement. It was a, an identifier. It was powerful, very much about hip-hop being heard, uh, the community, the culture. There was uh, the Black Panther Party. I think it was really important to talk about that era in the 70s, the Vietnam War. Um, and there was uh, activists during that time. They gravitated to the hoop earring. And when you look at the images, you see Angela Davis. She had large hoop earrings, sometimes medium size, but they were thinner in, in, in diameter. And then you had, heroin was a big deal in the 70s. Uh, Vietnam War, um, organized crime, and then the drug dealers' wives were wearing hoop earrings. And that could vary from uh, gold to diamonds, just depending on where you were in terms of the food chain in street culture. But when I think about the hoop airing and I think about black and brown communities and how they naturally gravitate to the hoop airing, I can draw a line back to Africa, to the kings and queens, where they use that as a significant symbol of wealth and power. And that continues to be that narrative, whether it's said or unsaid. We have a huge responsibility to tell the story because if we don't tell the story of the influence that you see um, on the runways, in the magazines, um, you know, I can't allow for Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker to be the person that introduced bamboo hoop earrings. I just, you know, you can't, that, that's, that's erasing two decades of style. If you look at some of our most celebrated activists, you can find an image of her wearing a hoop earring. Whether it's Nina Simone, whether it's Toni Morrison, whether it's Angela Davis, whether it's Betty Shabazz, I mean, I could go on and on and on. And I think hip hop artists are activists of their own right, because they're telling stories. It might not be their personal story, but it would be the story that they have, have witnessed.